bring the artists, bring the dancers. Whoa. Let's Talk with Lakshmi, a show about us, our people, our community, our culture, our experiences. And viewers, we hear about domestic violence all of the time, but recently it's been seeming to be hitting home more right here in Queens, New York. I have today with me Sukri Budram, a domestic violence activist. Now Sukri is actually a survivor of domestic violence, and she started a group called Kamba. So great. Welcome to Let's Talk with Lakshmi. Thank you. It's Thank always you so great much. seeing you. You're doing Good. so much amazing work for our community. Thank you. Well, first of all, what is CADVA? CADVA, the acronym for, uh, for it is Caribbean American Domestic Violence Awareness. And as you know, and we've talked over the years, there has not been an organization or foundation that's singularly focused on the Caribbean, Indo-Caribbean communities in North America on this specific um, topic of domestic violence. There has not been any foundation. So this foundation um, I launched back after the publication of my book and my story to help my community. It's a community organization, it's a grassroots organization, and um, I believe with focus and dedication that uh, CADVA is eventually going to change the platform of domestic violence as we see it today. But it's not going to happen. It's with the community's help, with your help, bringing awareness to the community. So CADVA is is a community organization. Awesome. Now, I know in Breakout, you spoke about your own personal um, story with domestic violence. And, and as we know, that's what has led you to create Kanva. Now, someone experiencing domestic violence, what will you guys at Kanva, how can they get involved? What type of help will you give them? Okay, first of all, Kanva does a couple of things. It goes out to the community and, and, and open up dialogue using visual arts, like we had our art exhibition, as you know, earlier this year, which is, will be at Adelphi University here locally on December 14th. We use that to open dialogue. These sessions are usually closed sessions, and people come up and they share their stories so that the community can hear them. We partner up with various health agencies in the community. So for example, I'm an outreach agent for New York Mayor's Office right here in Queens at the Queens Family Justice Center. We've talked about that before. So if someone, I'm, uh, I'm experiencing domestic violence, for example, in Richmond Hill, Queens, right? I can say, all right, um, let me talk to my um, partner at the Queens Family Justice Center, find out somebody who they can talk to, and be that bridge. It's an outreach bridge. So it's really a grassroots organization bringing awareness and education to the community, how to recognize domestic violence, how to speak up against it, how not to be ashamed. And then when they feel strong enough, we say, all right, let's just partner up with an agency that's already established. There are tons of agencies around the US and North America and even the Caribbean. That's what we do. We're grassroots and an outreach agency. Now, Sukri, I've actually been hearing a lot lately in our community when it comes to domestic violence. We've been hearing about girls being cut up into pieces, being stabbed, being choked. I mean, what reason can you think of? Because I know, you know you're know, you also counseling and you're very involved with a lot of women and men. Why do you think women stay in these abusive relationships? Well, first and foremost, uh, one of the reasons women stay, and I can pull back to my experiences, is um, it's a cultural norm. It happens in our culture. It's um, shame. We stay because how we, we want to make it better. We think if we stay long enough and we keep proving how much we love the person and love love them so much to the point we want to make them change. We stay because of that, of cultural norms, social expectations, pressures from family, wanting it to be better. Also is the victim becomes very weak. They feel that they are responsible. And one of the first things an abuser will tell a victim when a victim finally picks up his or her bag and say, I'm going to leave. Right. Almost about the first thing they'll say, well, if you leave, I'm going to kill myself. I'm going to commit suicide. Right. My abuser told me the same thing. and. I felt so guilty. Oh my God, what would family say if I caused this death? What would my kids say? What? My kids won't have a dad, you know? Right. People will judge me. 
But you know, once I went through counseling and recovery, I learned I was weak. I blamed myself for the abuse. I felt that if I stepped out of my um, comfort zone and putting on my lipstick and going out and coming and smiling, I have smiling, I have a great husband or a wife, and life's good. I don't know how to function outside of that. But when I got better, I learned that a person's decision to end their life or to abuse someone is their choice. So I have a choice being a victim, whether I stay or I leave. If I say I'm going to leave and the person threatens suicide, you know what? I'm sorry, but your life, if you don't value your life enough, I value mine. That's what you learn as you become educated, empowered, energized to take care of your life. Because the only thing we learn is, I learn, is I can only take care of me. I learned three C's through this process, through my recovery. Okay. I did not cause someone to become abusive. I can't control their behavior. I think I could. And I can't change them. I can only apply those three things. Change, cause, and cure them from it. I can only apply that to me, but there's a fourth C called contribution. I can contribute to make it worse by not standing up for myself or my family. And one of the things I want to add out, you know, my mother, when I left, my kids were early teens, really rough ages, and right. my son is now 20. Went through a lot. We've talked about my son starting to drink, uh, starting to lie, starting to be rude. Some of the behaviors that he saw as normal from the dad, he started to display. Right. But now he's 20. You and I both know I've worked with him over the years through counseling, talked to him. You can break the cycle. But one of the messages I want to say to mothers, especially mothers out there, if we think we're staying in a marriage because if we break up a home that the kids will be scarred or if dad or mom is abusive, we're doing the kids a disjustice because they will grow up and thinking that is a normal family, that abuse is okay. So they themselves might go out and seek, if it's a daughter, they may go out and seek the role model as a husband, I mean a husband that was her role like model, was the abusive dad. So we are not doing the kids any justice by staying in an abusive marriage. It's a very wrong message to send to children, especially your daughters, because the father is the example of the husband type role that the girls go after, right? So if the husband, if the dad's a drinker, an abuser, that's all they know. That's all they're comfortable around. And it's all about comfort. So think about it. If you're walking in a comfortable shoe right. and your feet doesn't hurt, right? You're gonna stay in that shoes. We've all worn the shoes until it falls apart. Right. But try to get in a new pair of shoes, it hurts. Right? But you wear it long enough and the leather gets stretched out, guess what? It becomes comfortable. So we just have to try something a little different because obviously what we're trying actually is not working. It's getting worse. Look at the recent murder of uh, Samantha Sewell. That is sad. Everybody knows she was abused. The neighbors heard the fight. Nobody picked up the phone to call. And which was very sad. I read in the newspaper that said she uh, was having an affair and she came home and told the husband that she was. That does not give him a license to kill her. Right. No one made it. He him could call. have walked away, but abusers don't walk away. They stalk you, they haunt you, and if they can't control you in life, they'll control you in death. Very, very sad story. I'm sure many of you at home watching this right now can recall the story with Samantha Sewell who was brutally murdered by her husband and the body was found under the bed. Now, Sukri, I know that you recently came back from Guyana and you did a youth conference there on domestic violence. Tell our viewers a little bit about that youth conference. It was Ghana's first international youth conference focusing on educating the youth about how to recognize violence from sexual bullying, domestic violence, uh, comes in many forms, physical, emotional, verbal, sexual, racial tolerance, and how do kids recognize what's um, abuse if they don't know how to, rec how to identify it? They may know it from physically, you know, having a bruise and stuff, but if somebody's putting you down, not making you feel like you're good enough, that's abuse, and you have to know it. We had one case, and I wanted to share with you. We went to SQ Go and one of the session. And this one boy, he's 11 years old and it's a break the silence. He started talking about his experience and how he feels. And he, his mother is light skinned and his father is Guyanese black. Okay. 
he came out dark of the only kid and his mother always puts him down and he, this is he sharing he's 11 and he starts to cry and he said he his mother always tells him slaps him over the head and said how come you come out so black he's 11 years old the kid can't help it and Thank God resident counselor Diane Madre on Cadva was there. She was able to take him in a room and talk to him. So she went back this weekend to, to talk to him a little bit more. But you tell a kid they're not good enough and you're not white enough or why you come out so dark, you're not good enough. What do you think that does to a child? I disagree, that's definitely mental abuse. I mean, right. We know there are all sorts of abuse, not only physical, sexual, mental, but I know you had some youths that went down with you from right. New York City. We have Melissa from Dreamcatchers. Right. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a little break and when we come back, we'll talk with Melissa. First it was a slap, then he would apologize. Don't let your drama lead to trauma, came no respect. which may determine your future. Don't allow the choices you make to, to take on. you away from the ones you love. But it ain't no use. I can't take no more for this fossil abuse. months ago after my mother's hospitalization the doctors wanted to put her in hospice and I'm like you know they deemed her terminal and I saw Mr. Takur I think the founder on TV and um, he was advertising this Indian community in Kings Harbor it's a great Indian community where my mother feels at home and she expresses her happiness to me whenever I come I know when I come I feel happy I stay couple here and I see everybody and I'm so happy. I brought my mother here like a month and a half ago and I haven't regretted my decision. It's one of the best decisions I've made for my mother. It's a home away from home. For all your special private and professional occasions, no event is too big or too small. We cover it all. Contact the professional source for all your party or special occasion needs. We have you covered at Star Party Rentals. Call us 516-239-2242. Please mention Let's Talk With Luxury for discount pricing. New York City, he is coming to celebrate his birthday in fine style. The 2013 Chutney Soka Monarch Champion, the showstopper, Mr. Raymond Ramerine. On Sunday, September 8th, 2013, it's a full concert on the seas with Raymond Ramerine and a special guest, the heartbreaker Ranjeev. Music by Powerhouse International, DJ Shortman, Shami Sound, DJ King Singh, DJ Reckless, DJ Dwayne, and DJ Simply E. They'll also be live tossed a touch of green birthday crew. The New York City edition aboard the Golden Sunshine, via number four, Emons Avenue, Sheepshead Bay, Brooklyn, New York, extension number nine of Belt Parkway. Boarding is 1 p.m. Sailing at 2 p.m. Hosted by MC Rose of Back in Our Radio. Tickets $45, which includes free food. Tickets available at Star Music, Ace Tropical Market, Trin City Restaurant, and Big Market in the Bronx. For tickets, call 646-932-2762, 646-210-8094, 518 -881 or 347 543 Well, guys, we are back with Melissa. Melissa is one of the co founders of Dreamcatchers. I'm sure a lot of you have heard about Dreamcatchers. She and her group was on the show before. Now, 
Melissa, I gotta ask you, how did Dreamcatchers get involved with Codbook? Well, we've always partnered with them ever since the beginning, maybe about two years ago, they had an event, um, which really brought out, I was basically exposed to the issue of domestic violence again. And I've always heard about it, but that's the first moment where I actually learned about Codbook. And since then, I've always been interested in what they do, and I always wanted to get involved. So since then, we've gone to, we had a conference at NYU, right. and that was great because we brought out the college students and we spoke to them about what the issue are and then um well this mission we were invited to their youth conference now what would you say was the inspiration or the motivation behind the youth conference for domestic violence well domestic violence is an issue that doesn't just affect the adult it obviously affects the children and they are the most sensitive to the issue because they're the ones who are seeing it but they're not actively able to actually make the difference in within their home sometimes so in order to change this, in order to end domestic violence, how are we going to end it? Well, the older generation is probably already in their mentality. How are we going to break that? It's right. very difficult. But we can make a difference by exposing the youth, by talking to them about it. And I think that's one of the greatest steps. And I think that CODBA making that initiative is just, it's momentous. Now, Melissa, I know you and some of your colleagues actually work hand in hand with some of the youths there. I know there was about 300 audience. Now, one thing that really impressed me is Sukri told me that you guys actually did a conference with boys as well. Now, tell me how the men, the boys, the young boys, reacted to this conference about domestic violence. I think the young men in particular, they sometimes feel that domestic violence is attack on men. And they did a voice that, and I think that's important that they open up that dialogue to say, you know, why is domestic violence always an attack on men? Aren't there men who also are the victims of domestic violence? And just opening up that dialogue meant a lot because the young men in the audience, maybe they felt that way too and they right. couldn't speak up about it. So that started a new wave of conversation. And it's important to let everyone know that no, domestic violence isn't a just against the wives against their husbands or the husbands against their wives. It's something that affects everybody in the home. So I think that was nice of the young men right, to bring that to the table. And Melissa, the young women that were there, how, I mean, did you talk to anyone one-on-one -on -one that maybe, you know, told you a personal story? How do you think that they reacted to this entire conference? Um, the young women that I did speak to, um, they had seen domestic violence and they basically explained their concern about what it is doing for the country. Um, I feel that the fact that I was there, maybe as an outsider because I'm from New York of course and just talking about it, we were able to relate and I think that was a good message to show that you know, domestic violence is it's everywhere and we can still connect and we can talk about it and it's a medium for us to learn together. Don't let your drama lead to trauma, which may determine your future. Don't allow the choices you make to take you away from the ones you love. Two months ago, after my mother's hospitalization, the doctors wanted to put her in hospice. And I'm like, you know, they deemed her terminal. And I saw Mr. Takur, I think the founder, on TV. And um, he was advertising this Indian community in Kings Harbor. It's a great Indian community where my mother feels at home and she expresses her happiness to me whenever I come. I know when I come, I feel happy. I stay couple and I see everybody and I'm so happy. I brought my mother here like a month and a half ago and I haven't regretted my decision. It's one of the best decisions I've made for my mother. It's a home away from home. Elegant Floral Design. We can help you beautify your events. No occasion is too big or too small. We specialize in floral decor and party planning for every event. Please call 718-322-9786. Please use promo code LUXMI 
for a discount. New York New City York is City. coming to celebrate his birthday in fine style. style. The 2013 Chutney Soka Monarch Champion, the showstopper, Mr. Raymond Ramnerai. On Sunday, September 8th, 2013, it's a full concert on the seas with Raymond Ramnerai and a special guest, the heartbreaker Ranji. Music by Powerhouse International, DJ Shortman, Shami Sound, DJ King Singh, DJ Reckless, DJ Dwayne, and DJ Simply E. They'll also be live Tassa, a touch of green birthday crew. The New York City edition aboard the Golden Sunshine via number 4, Emons Avenue, Sheepshead Bay, Brooklyn, New York, extension number 9 of Belt Parkway. Boarding is 1 p.m. Sailing at 2 p.m. Hosted by MC Rose of Back in Our Radio. Tickets $45, which includes free food. Tickets available at Star Music, Ace Tropical Market, Trin City Restaurant, and Big Market in the Bronx. For tickets, call 646-932-2762, 646-210-8094, 518 881 or 347 girls react to this conference? The young women I felt that I encountered, actually the young women who were speakers at the conference, I think that this conference gave them a sense of empowerment to speak up and to open the dialogue to initiate with others all around them. Um, for instance, there were two young women who gave us a speech on domestic violence and I was just so touched by how engaging they were how relevant and how well educated they were on the topic and they were young as well probably in their 17 18, year, 18 years old and for them to stand up in front of a conference of 300 other youth I think that's a very important message that you know you could be young and you could still have the empowerment to go and speak about something that is important to you what was the youngest person you came across that was abused well, abuse comes in many forms. I mean, I was sitting directly in front of a row of children who were from the orphanage. Okay. Now, I don't know their personal stories, but I've dealt with a lot of youths who come from that background, and I know that that is definitely, um, that's definitely sometimes where the most abuse may be most from the person I'd say was maybe Anissa Gopal. The conference was dedicated to her. She was a 16-year-old who unfortunately was a subject of domestic violence and she was killed. And there was a young girl there who maybe 11 years old who sang a memorial song for her and that was very touching to know that the youths were coming together and doing something to basically just capture the beautiful, the youth and the essence of this young girl who 
Now, Melissa, I know Kava has tried to reach out to the family of Samantha Sewell, who was recently murdered right in Queens, New York. What are your views on that recent domestic violence issue? It's extremely unfortunate that even wherever we go, that that is an issue that happens. I can't believe it sometimes when I think that so many young lives are taken away for no point, no reason at all. This shouldn't happen. This shouldn't be a problem of our society. But the fact that we're taking a stand to educate others about that and to make a difference, it means a lot. And hopefully it can end. Now what is your message to anyone who's watching this today that may be involved in domestic violence, whether it may be physical, sexual, mental? What is your message to them? My message to all those out there, especially the youth, is to stand up, to open up, and to break your silence to begin that dialogue with anyone around you and just let them know anything that you feel inside. It's important to know that you can speak to others because that's the only way that anything, that any change has ever started, by speaking up. Well, Melissa, thank you so much for coming on Let's Talk with Lakshmi to share your experiences in Guyana with the Kava organization. Keep up all the great work that you're doing with Dreamcatchers and I'm sure this episode will touch many lives. Thank you. Thank you so much. Don't let your drama lead to trauma, which may determine your future. Don't allow the choices you make to take you away from the ones you love. Elegant Floral Design. We can help you beautify your events. No occasion is too big or too small. We specialize in floral decor and party planning for every event. Please call 718-322-9786. Please use promo code LUXMI for a discount. For all your special private and professional occasions, no event is too big or too small. We cover it all. Contact the professional source for all your party or special occasion needs. We have you covered at Star Party Rentals. Call us 516-239-2242. Please mention Let's Talk With Luxury for discount pricing.